Good morning. My name is Boris Pevsner. I'm the CEO and uh, founder of Live Art. And uh, you know, we are backed, as you can see, by Binance, Animoca Brands, Hashkey. And uh, really, our mission in life is to bring this $2 trillion asset class, which is art, to Web3. And you may be wondering, so $2 trillion is kind of a big number. So where does it actually come from? Well, uh, interestingly enough, if you look at kind of quantitatively at the art market, about 90% of the $2 trillion comes from about 200 artists. So our top 200 artists, we all want them to be on Web3, right? It's like this is really where we think they belong. I think all of us can agree to that. And right now, they don't even know most of them what blockchain is, right? So the question is how to get them from being traditional artists, let's just say in the legacy art world, to this new art world, which is entirely on blockchain, entirely on Web3. And so really, the company that, uh, that, uh, that is live art is dedicated exactly to that. So what I'm going to show you today is essentially a case study that will show you how we do it. I'm going to show uh, one artist. His name is Yumin Jun. So you see a lot of pictures here that I'm going to explain the context behind those pictures in a second. And so the question is, how do you take this artist, who is a very famous, really a rock star artist in the contemporary art world, about $153 million market cap, so that's the amount of extant artworks that he has, and he was a completely traditional artist. So now he's a substantially blockchain-based artist, and so that journey uh, that he has gone through is really the subject of my presentation today. So uh, let's, let's get started, and I'm going to start by letting the artist speak for himself. So let's see if that works. And I think here, hopefully, we're going to have a video. What 我也感觉这种它是指向未来的我希望受人家了解我如何面对这个世界。So, uh, let me recap. I mean, one thing that you probably saw is that it's a completely traditional artist, right? You, you, you just saw him in his studio, you know, working with his hands on the real canvas. And so, uh, how did this artist make a journey from basically that studio to, you know, this meme-like um, uh, art that you kind of see around you right now, right, that is showcasing his iconic Laughing Man character, so it's really true to his, uh, to his art, and uh, at the same time looks completely, you know, Web3 native, completely, well, in fact, this particular collection is actually the first Ordinals collection by a contemporary artist, the first in the world, and uh, uh, the, if you actually go to Sotheby's right now, the lot number one in the ordinal sale, which is, I think, lasting for another couple of days, is the Genesis uh, ordinal of this collection. Uh, I think that this QR code probably points to that, if anybody is interested in checking it out. So, uh, so let's recap a little bit, right? So this is uh, an artist that is extremely successful, $150 million in auction sales, so probably about twice as much in the total market cap right now. So if you look at his auction records, right, so there is, uh, he's gone, he's gone, uh, let's see if this laser works here. 
So there are some auction records at six and a half million, ten million dollars, right? So really super successful artists at auction, represented by some of the major museums around the world, M Plus in Hong Kong, MoMA in, uh, uh, in New York, and so on, right? So how did an artist like this actually start his journey into Web3, and how did that journey conclude so successfully? So uh, we essentially help artists like this to do this, right? So we have done this so far for, you know, a lot of artists. You will see some of those around you right now. So Yumin Jun, this is a, a Chris Levin uh, a portrait of uh, uh, Kate Moss, which is right behind you right there. And there are, you know, many of the art artists. We have about $200 million worth of art of this caliber that is currently sort of being in, in that is in the various stages of being brought to market, brought to blockchain, blockchain brought to Web3 audiences. So we have built a community of about 1.2 million NFT art enthusiasts, right? So if you look at our Twitter, it's about 300,000 or so members and so on. So those are the, that is the community that is interested in this kind of art as it's coming to Web3. And what's also very, very important is that we're being very quantitative about it, right? So we really quantify the, um, uh, the market for the artist, and you will see that here, right? We quantify the market for every artist. If you go to LiveArt.io, you will see, it's like it will look like you are half on the art site, half on a, you know, some kind of a crypto exchange site, because for every artist, we tell you precisely what is the market cap, what is the momentum, is it going up or down? Why do we do that? Because the Web3 audience is interested not just in art, but also in the financial component of art. It's just the way that this particular Community has evolved, you know that very well, right? It doesn't, it's not just, it's not just, it, it doesn't just have to be compelling art, it also has to be financially compelling. So we give both sides, right? We give this whole art historical perspective on the artist and we give the financial perspective on the artist and we merge the two together in the same place. And so for some artists, we bring uh, NFTs or ordinals to life, basically like uh, in the example that you just saw. So it's Chris Levin, this is Banksy. It says this is, uh, this is Kate Moss, and uh, in the case of Yumin Jun, which is right behind you right now. And for other uh, artists, we take the physical artwork and we create an NFT collection that is essentially a fractional ownership of that physical artwork with some additional, uh, with some additional artistic content. So there are different ways that we do, but what's, what's important is that we bring both the artistic perspective, the curatorial perspective, and the financial perspective, and we put them together specifically to uh, sort of to make it relevant uh, for, the, for the Web3 community. And as I said, we've done it for many artists. What's most important here is that every time we launch a collection by an artist, we engage the, you know, the Web3 community. It could be an Ordinals community for this particular project or an Ethereum community or communities on another chain, wherever that chains, wherever, wherever that uh, collection actually is going to live going forward. So this is a super important uh, component of what we do. And so as a result, right, so for every artist, in addition to having this overall community of about 1.2 million art enthusiasts, for every artist, we create a community for that artist. And so that artist continues to uh, deliver interesting things for that community. So in this case, the interesting thing is a print, right? So in addition to the NFT or an ordinal, the artist may choose to also drop a print to the community. The artist signs it, and as you can see, our Twitter, if you go and look at it, is full of these unboxing videos and unboxing um, experiences that people like to share. Now, one thing that I want to say about this is that from the artist's perspective, that's amazing. If you imagine you, well, that's called legacy artist, you know, most of your um, collectors are quiet people, right? They do not really let it all hang out. They're not really going to show, um, you know, their holdings. They're very, very private in the traditional art world. In the Web3 world, the exact opposite is true. And so for an artist, it's super exciting. It's extremely interesting to have this uh, kind of a community in addition to their, you know, let's just call it legacy art collecting community. So, uh, so that's, uh, you know, some of the examples here, but you don't have to look here because you can look around you for some of the examples of this Ordinals collection that we recently published by Yumin Jun. What's interesting here is that we placed, uh, or the artist placed this iconic character, right, which is sort of in all of his multi-million dollar paintings, in the context of uh, various art historical events, right, various uh, historical events, various places. Well, in this case, you know, some meme-like things like, you know, Bitcoin was an ordinals community, so, so there's a lot of Bitcoin-related memes that are kind of part of that. And so that way, and that's also extremely important, this, uh, this, this art 
is true both to the artist's um, uh, sort of legacy and to the Web3 community, be that ordinals or ETH, that, uh, that, is, that is going to basically be collecting these works going forward. So this is one example, right? It's a $153 million artist that we've, bring, that we've brought to market in this way. And we do that basically for many other artists. There are many other drops. There will be one of the largest Latin American artists that's coming to uh, the same platform uh, shortly. We are launching an arts point universe and so on and so forth. So there's about $200 million, again, speaking in numbers, of such projects that are going to start entering uh, the, the, the blockchain community over the, next, uh, over the next few months. So this is uh, basically what we do, right? So when in, going back to the beginning, there is this giant $2 trillion asset class. We all want this asset class to move from the legacy world into the blockchain world. There are many ways to do it. You can do it by publishing NFTs and ordinals by famous artists, which is what you see here. You can do it through fractionalization, tokenization. You can do it through many other ways, but, but, but what's most important, right, is that we want that asset class to live on blockchain. And this is what live art is about. Thank you.